just jumped on tonight to show you the beginning of my next project. I'm not going to finish it all tonight because it is a lot later than I would like it to be to start this project, but once I show you what I'm up to, you'll understand why I'm just now getting to the point that I am. There's a lot of work involved in it, but the end result is worth it. So, that said, what is it that I'm making? Let me show you. I am getting ready to make dandelion jelly. So as you can see, I've got quite a few dandelions that have been picked. My wonderful honey went ahead and picked till I was happy with the amount that he had. And now I get the fun job of plucking all of the petals from these dandelions. Some of them are already starting to wilt. So it's going to be a little bit challenging, but we need to get all the yellow, just the petals, out of these dandelions, which is what I've been doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and work on plucking those. Um, what I will show you is that it is a little bit of a pain in the butt, so you don't want any of the green. So you want to try to get rid of that pull it back and then you can pinch it and give it a little wiggle and you'll be able to pull out most of those. And if you do end up with a leaf like I did there you can see, you can just go ahead and pull that out of there before you put it into your container. So get that out of there. And I will have yellow fingers when I'm done as you can see I already do. But you just come in here and you just pluck those out. And when you have enough, then we can add water to it and we will make a dandelion tea, which is the same as what we did with our lilac jelly. Um, if you didn't watch that video, I encourage you to go ahead and watch that. Um, but otherwise, the process is ultimately the same. So I'm going to go ahead and keep working on these until I have enough to make my tea. And then we'll pick back up once that is complete which will probably be at least an hour from now. Okay, so I finally have my petals that I need for my dandelion tea. That took a long time. I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna add them to my pot, and then we will add to that our water. And we're going to stir that up and get them all saturated in there, and we're going to bring this to a boil. After we've brought this to a boil, we'll go ahead and we'll strain out all the dandelion petals and leaves because we don't want those in our actual jelly, and we can put what remains in the fridge overnight, and that will be our dandelion tea. I think just because I don't want to deal with straining it right now tonight, I think I'm just going to bring this all to a boil and I'm going to put all of it in the fridge overnight. Just let it steep a little bit longer, hopefully pull more flavor out of it. And then in the morning I will meet back up with you and we will get this strained out, add the rest of our ingredients and put it in our jars for some tasty jelly. Okay, so last night we got our petals all plucked from our flowers and we put them in with water brought it to a boil essentially making a dandelion tea our next step in the process now is that we need to get all these leaves strained out of it so we have just the liquid remaining so i'm going to show you the process in which i do that i'll set this over here so you can actually watch me do it i have a quart jar that i'm going to use um and just because I'm always a mess, I am gonna use my canning funnel since it's got the nice wide mouth. And then I have um, a little screen that'll fit right inside of that. Set that there. And I'm gonna just pour this right through there. That way it'll get my, my petals as the liquid strains through. Okay. 
can see it's definitely got that yellow color which will probably lighten up some as we finish this process. So I've got all those petals out of there. As you can see they're all nicely strained and out. Um, I'm going to kind of squish them a little bit and try to get some of that extra moisture out just like we did with the uh, lilac tea. I don't know why I didn't think about using this strainer when I did that because that would have made my job easier but all right I think I've got most of that liquid out and we can go ahead and set that aside and there we have our dandelion tea. So our next step in the process then would be to put this back in our pot um, and we'll add lemon juice, sugar, and pectin. Like I said, again, the same as we did with the lilac. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on that. So amongst having a busy life, running our small farm with the garden and the animals and everything else that we have going on there, all the jellies that I make and yet the other canning that we do, um, we both work full-time jobs outside the home and we have two young kids in the mix. And so part of having two young kids in the mix means all kinds of extra activities outside the house. We, as you already saw me working on, I am in the process of making the dandelion jelly. I didn't finish it yet because I want to actually show you the entire process, but after we strained it out and we have the tea ready to go, I put that on pause because I have a Little League game to go to. So when I get home tonight from the Little League game, then I can actually go ahead and finish making our jelly and showing you how that turns out, how it sets up. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it's a busy life trying to raise kids and manage everything that we have going on. Sometimes I have the time to actually stop and do everything I wanted to do right then and there and get it all done and other times I have to pause in the middle and unfortunately this is one of those times so it'll probably be another late night by the time I get home I'll have another hour of work just to finish up everything with my jelly but we'll get there. So I have my dandelion tea and I am going to add my lemon juice to this before I put it in the pot because I don't know if the lemon juice changes the color of it like the like it did with the lilac jelly. So I want to find out if it does. So I have that already measured out. So all we gotta do is pour it in there. I don't know, I think it lightened it a little bit. Either way, it's going to be a nice golden yellow color when we're done. So we're going to go ahead and put that into our pot. There's our tea. We're also going to add a teaspoon of butter, just because that'll help um, reduce the foaming as this is boiling up. Okay, and then the next thing that we need is our pectin. Um, again, I have the Sure brand. That just happens to be the brand that I can get at my local store. Set that aside. All right, I'm just gonna put that in there. And I actually should have waited to add the butter. Usually you add the butter after you bring it to the boil the first time. I just wasn't really thinking. Just did but oh well so we'll get this heated up and I'm also going to turn on the water again in the back so we can have our lids ready when this is ready to go in the jars so we've got those both going um, I'm going to take my whisk and whisk in that pectin so that it'll dissolve and we're going to wait for this to come up to a boil once it comes up to a boil it's going to be one minute that we set our timer for let it boil for that full one minute and after that, then we'll add some sugar to this.
Okay, so I think we're at enough of a boil that we can go ahead and set our timer. So let's go ahead and do that. One minute and start. Okay, and my water for my lids is getting close as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. I put six lids in. I believe this recipe makes about six half pints. So we'll bring those up to a boil so they're nice and hot, and that way that'll allow us to get a nice seal once we put those on top of our jars. We got about 30 seconds left, and then we can add our sugar. All right, last 10 seconds. And there we go. So let's add that sugar in. And again, we want to get that whisked up. Ooh, that smell. It has a lovely smell. I wish there was such a thing as smell o vision and you guys could see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that um, whisked in. And let that come back up to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil with all that sugar in there and dissolve, we're going to make sure that we actually let it dissolve, um, boil for another full minute before we put our jars in. So while this is coming back up to a boil, I'm going to go check on my jars, make sure they're ready to go. And then we'll put it in the jars and get it canned. Okay, looks like we've gotten our boil again with our sugar in there. So we'll go ahead and set our timer again for one more minute and then we will put these in the jar. So while this is boiling for its one more minute, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the jars out of the canner so that we can fill them. Okay, so it's been a minute. We're gonna go ahead and turn off both the front and the back burner because our lids are ready. And then we will go ahead and start filling our jars. And hopefully I can do this without making as much of a mess as I did the other day when I made my lilac jelly. I always end up making a mess, but I guess that's just part of the process. All right, so I got six jars set up and we're gonna go ahead and get those filled. Looks like I still made a mess. That's okay though. That's why we, for one, that's one of the reasons that we always have a towel on the counter that we're working on. So that any mess that we have, we just throw it in the wash and wash it up and be done with it. Quick, easy, and simple. We did get a little bit extra. I have these little um, sample cups that we use sometimes. So when I have just a small amount, I like to put it in that. 
Um, and we'll use that sometimes when we go to the market to offer people a little sample that they can try it and see if they like it before they go ahead and buy it. So it looks like the right amount for that. And then that'll just go right into the fridge. Outside. And that'll set up in the fridge all on its own. So. We'll go ahead and put our lids on. six rings. And a lot of times it is nice to use a, um, what are those called? Uh, like a oven mitt? Yeah, that's what I use is an oven mitt because these jars are really hot. I mean, they were just boiling. So, but that's not what we're going to do today. All right. And we'll go over to the canner. All righty. Six jars to add. Canner's already hot, as you can see. Plenty of steam coming off of it. Carefully set those in there. I must have spilled something on the floor while I was working because the dog's over looking up the floor at the moment. Doesn't want to stay standing up. There we go. Put the last one in there. We'll put our lid on. And then, of course, we want to turn it to canning. There we go. So we'll bring that up to a boil. Once it starts boiling, we will set a timer for 10 minutes and pull them out, see what we have. So it's been the 10 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and turn the canner off completely because we're done for the night. And we can take our lid off. And you can see they had a nice boil in there. We're gonna go ahead and take these jars out and see if we get a seal. heard a small one, a small ping, two, three, four, five, that's pretty good. Five out of six already. Oh, there was six. So it looks like we got them all. So as you can see, we've got a nice golden yellow color to them. We'll let them sit overnight. 
and hopefully in the morning they'll be set. Sometimes they can take a day or two, but I do believe that they're going to set. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and clean up my kitchen, and I'm going to have a little treat, a piece of toast with some of our lilac jelly on it from the night before. Thanks for joining. Now you know how to make this. Come back and check out some other things that we're going to be making in the next few weeks. And in the meantime, keep your timbers a-shiverin'.